everyone. Uh, like uh, Ian said, I am the performance analyst of uh, Portuguese and ball team, and uh, I will try to explain a little bit the way how we do things. And uh, if uh, you want to interrupt at any time, don't be afraid, just ask the questions or write in the chat, whatever, and then we can turn this a little bit more exciting. I will start and try to share my screen. Okay, let's start. This, um, this sentence from Sun Tzu could uh, apply a lot to game analysis. So basically you should know your opponent to achieve success. You should know what you are going to, to face. So the main objective of um, game analysis is to study the player's behavior and uh, each one's contribute to the overall team performance. Um, this is to say, uh, we try to find the reasons why the teams win or lose the matches, uh, assuming that uh, it's possible to, to establish relations between the qualitative variables and uh, the matches outcome. Uh, in line with this, the way how it is analyzed has suffered some improvements, fortunately. For example, uh, the thousand and thousand of sheets with the statistics had disappeared because this procedure was made manually. Nowadays, we have softwares that allow us to get information in any moment, in any place, in uh, different devices and platforms. And XPS is an excellent tool to help coaches in uh, game analysis. So what do the game analysis consists in observation, collecting the data, the analysis, and then the reports. So we can comprehend the evolution of the game to positively influence the training process and the main objective to improve the performance. And uh, so why should we analyze the matches? Uh, because uh, many times when the game is finished, we just start to discuss the movements of the players, uh, certain goals and saves, but there are always some situations that escape from our memory. In my opinion, when we speak in a game analysis, uh, we think that uh, it will help us to prepare the next match uh, in the way that we can have knowledge of our opponent's game model and strategies. I think this is the basis. Basically, we analyze the opponent to access their weaknesses and uh, strangers so we can explore the situations that uh, will allow us to reach the, the success, uh, which will help us in a certain way to reduce the problems of the competition and the uncertainty. Uh, if I know my opponent's playing strategy, uh, then for sure I will be able to better prepare the training sessions and consequently to prepare the competition. And if we are capable to do that, if we are capable to give the best solutions to the players, then we are good leaders for sure. And the players will face the process in a positive way. And our role of leadership is going to improve. Here I will present some examples of situations that uh, were prepared based on the, the information uh, taken from our analysis. Uh, in, the, in this uh, first example, we saw some weaknesses uh, and tried to explore uh, some advantage with the height differences in the wing defender and we put another pivot in the wing position.
we try to see the how the defender reacts. Of course, he is not uh, always try to score from that position, but at least we can force to a reaction, and then we can open opportunities to score from other positions. Now the defender goes up on the left back. We have some spaces. The beginning is the same, but how it ends, it's different. Okay, in the second one, we try to explore the relationship chips uh, two against two between the backcourts and the, the line player, because we saw some weaknesses in the defenders, uh, especially in the center position. So we prepared some situations with previous movements, movements but the idea was uh, trying to finish uh, two against two in the center position. Of course, uh, this is not always perfect. Uh, in this match, specifically, we detect uh, a low efficiency from the wing shots on the goalkeeper of Norway. And then we try to prepare some solutions to try to score from the wing position. In eight matches, the goalkeepers had only four saves in eight matches. I think you can count how many saves he already has done only in our match. But that's the way it is. Uh, it doesn't make sense to speak about uh, game analysis if uh, we don't have a deep knowledge of uh, our sports uh, because uh, it's an open sport. So we don't know what will happen. Open sports are uh, characterized for infinite, almost infinite solutions for the same situation. That solutions could be good or bad depending on the context and the players. It's all about time and spacing. We can't decide with all the time of the world, of course. And uh, upon a specific game situation that we are watching, we should be capable to answer to several questions. That is, that will give us enough, enough tactical information to know what is happening. And those questions should fit to analyze every phase of the game. After all, after we have those questions solved, we have to distinguish some variables to conclude the characterization of our opponent's game model. For example, uh, when we see an action, we have to know if it is an individual or a system trend. We have to 
make sure what we are seeing. Uh, the example of uh, fainting, uh, if uh, a player go out to the pivot side or if uh, he goes out, why? Because there is a pivot or he always faint to that side. We have to pay attention to this kind of uh, details. And then uh, it is an individual trend or from the system, like I said, but to make sure uh, to know all of that, it depends of the quantity of available information. We need many games, many games to, to watch and to analyze, to have uh, clear in our mind the game system. When you talk about the game model and the, the first thing that we pay attention when we are looking for the, the offensive game is the playing system and uh, if uh, there are some alternatives. And then to deepen the study of the opponent game model, we take into account these two aspects, the structure and the functional aspects of the system. The structural aspects, uh, for example, if the, a team plays in a 3-3 formation or 2-4 with uh, two pivots, the usual players, the players that don't participate in both phases, the attack and the defense, and finally, if uh, there is some criteria to manage the, the time of playing. And uh, regarding the functional aspects, uh, we have to know the way how the system works and to know uh, each team, we have to evaluate how they circulate the ball, for example. I know it seems a, a basic thing, but uh, it's the first uh, tactical mean and uh, it could give us good information uh, about how the team creates uh, defensive imbalance. Uh, then we look at uh, the player's activities. It's also important to characterize the individual behavior of the players. And to do that, we focus on three aspects, the individual potential, collective potential, and the scoring potential. Regarding to the first one, we see the potential to, if the player can uh, shot from middle range, if it's good in breakthrough, the cycle of steps, etc. The collective potential is the capacity to drawing the defender, the type of passes, the screenings, and the scoring potential. It's if it's able to taking the advantage from the situation created by the teammates. And in the defensive system is almost the same. Usually we pay attention to the usual playing system and if they have alternatives. And then we also have structural aspects and functional aspects. The structural aspects, it's a defensive playing system. If there are usual players, specialists that only plays in the defense and the playing time manager also. The functional aspects are related to the, how the system works, the type of the defense, the type of actions, that uh, type of reactions that uh, players do. And uh, because it's not uh, enough to, to say that a team plays in defense with a 6-0 system, we have, to, we have to understand how the system works. And the last, the transitional game, which is the fast break and the defensive uh, retreat. Uh, it's not enough to uh, run faster along the court. We have to take into account some other aspects. For example, if the team anticipates the way how the fast break uh, happens, if uh, the defensive specialists participate or not in the fast break, the different waves, the trends in the starting position, and if there are a trend in the ending zone, if uh, there are some tactical means to develop in the fast break, and of course, if the teams perform or not the fast throw off. In the defense, uh, if the, how the teams uh, try to prevent the fast break from their opponent, the type of acting at the end of defensive retreat, if they play some 
they do some substitutions and the constraints if they cannot change the players because this is very very important basically this is the way we do it try to pay attention to these details in the different phases of the the game the idea is try to understand what is more relevant in every game phase and to do it we have to build good analysis formulas that allow us to structure all the information so what kind of information do we need to study our opponents uh, first of course we need matches <laughs> videos then we start to do our analysis statistics etc we try to characterize the opponent's game model um, in each uh, phase and we register we tag the individual and the collective actions uh, those taggings are made uh, take into account the time of play and the match status for example for the video setup uh, we use recent videos of course or at least we try to if possible and uh, if possible uh, matches between us because those are the most uh, important if we cannot have match, recent matches between us, at least we try to get some matches with teams with similar game style like ours, okay? But uh, it's crucial to focus on the essentials because many times uh, having more information could not mean and could not uh, represent information with quality. So we need to be clear. So, that what you we want the communication uh, besides the meetings of course we send uh, some stuff to the players with the platform the xps software and we also send uh, some videos in uh, whatsapp but uh, however uh, the analysis uh, doesn't make sense if uh, we don't solve the problem in the court this is the the main focus okay we have to solve the problems here we have to prepare the players in the court so uh, what is the the main role of uh, a person uh, like me in a, a high level essentially the the role of the the analyst is to relieve the head coach of having hours of work in front of the computer, uh, allowing more time to rest and to be able to take better decisions and uh, to better prepare the training sessions. Uh, basically, uh, we need uh, the head coach to be with perfect health to take some nice and good decisions. And uh, this is very important. We have to be in tune, you know, uh, we have to speak the, the same language and uh, we have to be, we have to, we must have a clear understanding of the concepts regarding the analysis language. Uh, all the staff has to be in tune, the technical staff. In our specific case, when we are in competition, we spend so much time together that uh, it's easy to to be in tune with uh, with everyone so the process the analysis process is made by four main stages uh, first one get the matches no matter how you can get it but you have to have matches then perform the analysis with uh, the software Third one, processing the data, uh, select the actions with criteria, select relevant statistics and so on. And finally, the communication with the players. We have to pass the information to the players. It could be individual, in group, with meetings uh, by the technology, and so on. But I have to say that the third stage is with no doubt the one that requires more time. It is from this step that uh, we can start to build uh, the match plan. 
basically uh, we register the, the actions with the uh, XPS then we export the information and the, the most uh, relevant numbers and uh, statistics to to graphics we some examples what we can do we with the numbers to a representative way and uh, we also build the event set in the in the software and then we export the most representative video clips from the software the pictures that we want to show to the players to present later in the in the meetings this is how it is we have a three way of analysis the data the video and live xps uh, it's a great tool uh, which allow us to advance to a higher level that is uh, to analyze the match uh, in live uh, usually uh, in live mode uh, i get the live feed from the tv broadcast and then I synchronize uh, the, the events with uh, the video that uh, the events that I tagged during the, the first half. Uh, we only have 15 minutes, uh, sometimes less than that uh, in the half time. But uh, in two, three minutes, I have uh, all set and we can have uh, uh, everything prepared to show pictures and events uh, to the coach and uh, to the players in the in the in the locker room uh, usually uh, no, okay let's keep going then we can see this is uh, for example in the euro 2020 in norway the place where i i was to perform the analysis of course uh, at the half time i have to run to the locker room to don't waste time but uh, sometimes it's closer, sometimes it don't. This is in Egypt, uh, the, the place where I stand to do the analysis, for example. This was in uh, France, in the pre-Olympic. I was very close to the bench. I almost could uh, speak with, uh, with Paulo because uh, with uh, because of COVID, there was no audience and I was really, really close to the bench. And uh, more recently in uh, Hungary, in Euro 2022, uh, we have a spot uh, behind uh, a goal and uh, we perform the analysis uh, from there. Uh, of course, uh, the game is uh, so fast that uh, you cannot uh, tag everything you want. It's not possible. But uh, the with the live mode analysis uh, could not be very detailed. But uh, with our formula, uh, we can get. Uh, it's possible to register the, the match time, the number of players, the game phase the defensive system, the attack openings, the type and the zone of finalization, the action outcome, the disciplines, the yellow cards, and also taking some notes. We do the live tagging uh, only for the first half uh, because uh, it doesn't make sense to do it for the second half. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> During the, the break, during the half time, we can see some pictures from the first half. And of course, I know and the, the coach know the game model of the opponent. And uh, if uh, some action uh, is new, of course, I immediately uh, select that action. And I know that Paulo will, will want to see that action. And um, but for the second half, we don't do it because then when I get to the hotel, I will analyze the match with the, the formula that we use to analyze all, all the matches. 
Okay, uh, independently of the type of uh, level of competition that we are involved, our analysis formulas should uh, be built, taking into account uh, uh, this important question. That is, how many time uh, should I have to dedicate to, to do it? And this is the, the most important part. Just for curiosity, uh, this graphic represents the time uh, dedicated, more or less, of course, uh, to the analysis in the different competitions that uh, we have participated in the in the last year. In the Euro uh, 2020, uh, we analyzed 67 matches, uh, which could uh, be that uh, amount of hours uh, we can consider more or less uh, two hours per match, uh, including uh, breaking down the match uh, and uh, export events, uh, exp uh, to divide the events and uh, export uh, some videos, more or less two hours per match. Of course, uh, this is just to get the data. Uh, to analyze, we need a little bit more time. Okay, this uh, is just breaking down the match, uh, perform all taggings, uh, export events, and sometimes export some videos. And then in the, in the World Championship, we reduce the number of uh, matches analyzed, 44. At the Olympics, uh, 43. And uh, at uh, Euro 2022, we analyzed uh, 23 matches. This uh, reduction of uh, matches uh, could have uh, uh, several explanations. Uh, at the beginning, uh, we start to analyze so much matches, and then we could uh, be more, uh, I don't, I wouldn't say perfectionist, but uh, we can select uh, better the kind of matches that we want to analyze uh, in the world. And you can see in the World Championship, uh, we analyze uh, less, a uh, lot of less uh, matches. At the Olympics, uh, we analyze too much matches because we play with teams that we didn't uh, play uh, until that moment. And uh, at the Euro, we analyze only 23 matches because uh, we sometimes repeat the opponents and we have uh, lots of information about the teams that we have already played. And then we only have to see if uh, something is different, what kind of movements uh, they have uh, new or if they do something different. Because if they don't, we can use the information that we already have. We only have to pick some uh, pictures, some videos that are most representative with new players because new players can get in, but the movements are the, the same, and then it's uh, the, the most uh, differences. So, regarding the statistics, uh, the numbers, what uh, we can expect from the official statistic uh, providers is more or less the same. Usually the data is, data is presented by commutative statistics during the, the competition with the shooting position, the, the goal. But uh, if we only look at the numbers, we miss the tactical procedures. So uh, once again, the importance of our formula it has to be personal and custom. It has to be in line and adequate to our needs. So when we have a lot of information gathered, what can we do with it? Now we are studying and seeing the match and the games in this uh, perspective with the, the pace metric, the game rhythm, how are distributed the ball possessions by the game phases, if we play fast or slow, and then the our and the opponent's efficiency uh, in the in the in the ball possessions. 
and uh, in the sub phases of the game. And then we have this kind of performance index. Uh, there are some numbers that uh, this is the our uh, attacking efficiency minus the opponent uh, attack efficiency. And there are some numbers that show us that if you have a performance index of 5%, you can reach medals. 7% you are going to win the competition and 9% you are a top team. And then we can for sure make some comparisons of uh, efficiencies of the surface. We can, you can see uh, dividing by five minutes period, uh, the goal difference. You can see how many time and how many ball possessions do you spend in attack and uh, in the, the defense. You can see your efficiency in attack and uh, in defense and with some trend lines. Then we can see separately with positional attack, transitional attack. You can export data related to the the goals scored and the goals against and uh, quickly with the data from xps analyzer we can uh, export to a graphic like this where you can see the numbers according to the the playing position and also we can extract in individual scores to do some comparisons for example with the, the data from the analysis formula from xps this uh, this is an example of a comparison between our efficiency and the netherlands which will be our next opponent related to the three uh, three group the three matches of the group phase in the in the in the last uh, euro and here uh, a general comparison uh, with uh, all the all the, the three matches from the group phase in the in the euro so uh, xps uh, plays an important role regarding what we can do with numbers uh, when we break down the matches we can quickly export the data and we have representative graphics that allow us to make some reports and uh, presentations I want to finish uh, this presentation uh, just telling this that we cannot uh, plan the way how it ends, but uh, we can play plan well the way to be there among the best. This is the last minute. We have our data and then, for example, we can go, sorry, because this is in Portuguese, <laughs> we can go to these folders and we have uh, uh, all matches of uh, our team. And for example, we can uh, easily uh, select uh, our matches, for example, this that are in green, and then we can select from here and then I select uh, every match that I want and I can compare things. Uh, we, I just uh, have to make sure that I have the, the, the same analysis formula and then I can go through the, the events. For example, I can see the in uh, which uh, type of finalization from wing, from pivot. I have all the numbers here because I have built this uh, statistics uh, models. 
I can see, for example, how is our efficiency playing six against six or seven against six. I have all the numbers here. I can see by the, the playing time. I can see, for example, individual statistics. If I only select our players, we have uh, statistics here, we have numbers and we can compare through the, the competitions. For example. Yeah, this was this was the interesting part that I was after. Uh, yeah, uh, like for the example. Statistics that you have built because you spoke about it before, uh, but it looks, uh, it looks a lot... Uh, a lot more realistic when you show it like this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the the, the 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 taggings, the events, and then if I go to statistic models, we can see the player and the zone of finalization. Of course, if I want to see this, I can see directly from here the video i don't know if the location is not changed just to make sure this is a shot from the wing from gunnarsson okay yeah and then it's how we do it and then for example the player and the action outcome only for our players for example the type of finalization and the outcome the wing pivot breakthrough jumping shot and goal missed turnovers etc we can see the zone and the outcome as you can see we have a lot of things here and you can the number of players and the outcome and you can build that on a statistic models basically is is that so for example we this match here with uh, switzerland it's here okay uh, quickly we can see for example portugal how was our performing playing seven uh, in superiority, six against five. And quickly, I can see that playing six against five, we have 12 ball possessions, eight goals, and two missed shots, for example. If I want to see those two missed shots, I can view clips. I think it could, oh, oh no, sorry, but I don't have the match here. But this how this is how it is. And for example, uh, I will not select, I will select both teams. And I want to see, for example, here, how was the score? And oh, I have this bar here. Sorry, I have to. For example, this is a quick information that we can have in uh, with statistic models. I can see only related to Switzerland, for example. Okay, uh, how many situations do they have in a positional? How many goal, goals they scored in positional game or in fast break? Okay, and we, in both matches, they scored 35 goals in positional and 19 in fast break. And we can compare to Portugal. In both matches, we score 46 in positional game and 20 in fast break. It's something like that. We now play with numbers. 
after the, the analysis, for example, what we can do. Here we have the, the face of the attack. Imagine that I am dividing the events of our team to analyze. And then I can select all the events. Sorry, I have to take this bar from Zoom. I can select all the events from the positional. And then I can send it to an event set. And I can create an event set with a Portugal positional attack. OK. And then I send. Imagine that I want to see, for example, only the turnovers. Sorry, my mouse, it's not OK. I can send to an event set, Portugal turnovers, OK? And then I have it here. If I open this, OK, now I have the information that I collect about our positional data. Of course, this is just a, a general example. Uh, you can divide for whatever you want based on you, your analysis formula. I can divide, for example, the number of players, only the situations, seven against six, for example. I can send this to an event. You have all variables of your formula here, and then you have to you can uh, export whatever you want. For example. Uh, We'll get this match against. Uh, no, these are two matches. Yeah. But for example, I select the data from Portugal. And this is my sheet Excel, and I paste here the data. This is the attack from Portugal, and then I will select. No, I don't need to do this because it's only two teams. Select the attack of Switzerland. put here the attack of Switzerland and then I have all the information here I just need to put here the number of matches two matches okay I have the ball possession the rhythm this is the the most uh, confusion part <laughs> is where all the all the information is gathered because as you can see, I have the formula here in, in every place I have to select. I have to say to the sheet that, for example, this is the, the goal score, uh, the, 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 no, the shots made in the six meter zone in the left wing. I have to say to the sheet that I want to say in the attack, I have to select it had to select in the in the zone in here only the six meter in the wing and the type of shooting wing and then we have the graphics this is all automated with the with the formulas this uh, depends on everything i paste here and I paste here the events of our formula. I select the team here, the attack and the defense. And I just paste the events that I tagged in XPS in the file. And then I have this ready to export to the, to the, to the reports.
then basic I, I will just follow up because there's basically what Benjamin asked now if you do any match reports to the players or something like that so is that the is that the data or is that the looks that you give to the players uh what you have just shown us in excel that's of course that that file i have all the information there but uh of course we only use what we need to use some specific things but i have all the information there uh, and then i export only things that i know that uh, paulo wants to know and uh, sometimes specific information that paulo wants to give to the players to uh, in the meetings uh, basically that file you can you can see as a whole and uh, as a, all the information is there and then you select whatever you want to to show but uh, all you want to know regarding to the efficiencies playing zones uh, scoring uh, whatever you have all the information all the possible information there and then you select whatever you want i think all the questions were answered uh, i think now it's the perfect time to probably end this so we are not going so long so uh, I, I would like to thank for all of you who stayed with us to Tiago once again it was uh, it was it was really really interesting to follow this and uh, the whole uh, webinar will be available in a couple of days on our blog and YouTube so you can rewatch and uh, and follow uh, and like rewatch the whole webinar so once again, thank you, Tiago. Thanks again. Thanks everyone. And uh, see you at the next uh, XPS webinar. So follow our social media and uh, let's see what's the next guest that we will have. Okay, thank you everyone. And uh, have a nice evening.